Yo, yo, welcome to PTA Sports. I am your host, Pest the Analyst. And boy, it's been a long time since I did one of these, huh? <laughs> hey, uh, first of all, I just want to uh, say uh, uh, my apologies, right? It's been a minute since I was able to get in front of this microphone, talk to y'all about uh, my New York football giants. Um, been kind of crazy, you know, with the new year, trying to get some things taken care of or whatever. Uh, but there's been uh, quite a bit of things uh, that's happened in Giants land. And uh, the specific thing that I want to talk about today is uh, our new coaching staff. Um, so most people already know how I felt uh, when the Giants hired Joe Judge as the head coach. Um, I-, I was a little angry. I was a little confused. Didn't didn't quite know what to make of it. Uh, after the man talked, I was like, huh, all right, <clears throat> this guy, this guy may have something. I don't know. You know, I'm going to step off of the ledge and, and kind of see what happens. And then uh, something real interesting happened. Uh, we took quite a while to put together our entire coaching staff. Like, it, it felt different. It felt different from when we hired Pat Shermer because, like, when, uh, when Pat Shermer was named the head coach, it, it seemed like it felt like a, a couple of days later, we just had this, this mishmash of guys that, that was, was, you know, going to be the coaching staff. Uh, some, of the, some of the choices didn't really make a whole lot of sense from a standpoint of like familiarity and, and scheme and whatnot. And it just, I, I don't know, it, it, it always felt a little weird and a little rushed and a little, you know, just kind of put together. Just, hey, let's just grab who we can grab and, and put, them, put them on his coaching staff. Uh, but this time, right, this time felt, felt different. Like, uh, I, I, can, I can remember, you know, sitting there just kind of just kind of waiting waiting to figure out you know who we were going to bring on and and it felt like just a a real real long ass time um you know th- then all of a sudden word came out that Patrick Graham was going to be uh the defensive coordinator right and it felt kind of weird because you know we we snagged him from Miami where he was also a defensive coordinator and initially it seemed like it was just like a lateral move which doesn't really happen very often right coach typically doesn't go from one team to another team and stay in the same position you know unless that coach was fired by the previous team um then a little bit more news came out a little later on that patrick graham was going to be the uh, assistant head coach so it was actually a promotion of sorts um and uh you know i'm not gonna lie when uh when I first when I first saw the news about Patrick Graham, um I, I was kinda I was kinda meh about it. I was just like, oh, Patrick Graham, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't really know a whole lot about Patrick Graham either. <laughs> so it was kind of a similar similar situation of uh of of Joe Judge. It was like I I don't know nothing about Patrick Graham. I've never heard of Patrick Graham uh, until right now. Um, and then it was just like, well, you know, he was a defensive coordinator for the Dolphins and the Dolphins didn't look so well. Um, and then, uh, and then I, I read a little bit more into him and, and come to find out like he was on the giant staff previously. I didn't even know that. I'm not even going to lie. I didn't even know that he was on our staff, uh, in the past. Uh, so I was like, oh, okay. So, I mean, like, this is a guy that, that, you know, we at least, know who this guy is from a front office standpoint. He was here before, you know, went over to New England, worked there for a little bit, went over to Miami as defensive coordinator. And I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, I wanted to kind of get a feel for, you know, what this dude does. And uh, <laughs> I still don't know what this dude does. And it's not, and that's not, I, I, I won't say that's necessarily a bad thing, right? Um, you know, there was uh, some videos out, you know, where he was talking about the style of, of defense he runs. And uh, a question was asked to him, hey, man, are you going to run the 3-4 uh, the or the 4-3? And his answer was yes. Like, he likes to be multiple. Uh, he likes to be flexible. He likes to do a whole lot of different things. And um, I, you know, listen, I'm, uh, I'm at a point right now where I'm just kind of like, all right, cool, you know, and at, and at that point of when that news came out and, you know, I, I read up and I watched some videos and, and kind of figured out who this guy was, I was like, all right, cool, like, 
we're in a position to where we don't have to totally change our defense. Um, we we don't have to you know try to try to move the players that we have and put them in different different spots, you know, lining up or whatever. So like, all right, cool. I guess we got a little continuity in terms of what we run, but kind of at the same time, not really, because if this dude wants to be flexible and multiple with his defensive looks, then you know, I I, I don't know what that's going to look like. We're gonna have to just wait and see. All right. So the next the next bit of information that came out uh, that was I guess real big because you know there was a, there was like some rumors and whatnot of some of these other coaches. Hey, you know we we may assign this guy. Hey, this guy's probably coming here. Hey, that guy's probably coming here. But like big news that was like announced was the fact that we hired Jason Garrett as our offensive coordinator. Now I am going to be completely completely honest with you. Um, when I found out that, uh, you know, the, the Giants had basically waited until his contract expired and brought him in to come in and interview, you know, I, I was like, no, I, I, I don't want him. Um, and, and like when we announced it, I was just like, oh my God, yo, my wife, my wife was laughing at me. Cause you know, yo, those who know wife's a dirty nasty stinking cowboys fan and she hates jason garrett <laughs> she hates his guts and so so when it turned out that we hired him you know she's laughing her ass off at me like i can't believe y'all just hired jason garrett and i was just like oh my god i was so pissed off um i had some conversations with some with some friends uh you know in regards to this hire um, listen to some other people, uh, you know, some prognosticators and some YouTubers, uh, talk about Jason Garrett. And, um, I'm not gonna lie. I'm still not like particularly happy with the move. I still don't like the idea of him running our offense, but here's the thing. All right. Uh, last time Jason Garrett was the offensive coordinator of the Cowboys, the offense was pretty damn good. All right, the offense the offense was pretty damn good. Did they win a bunch? No. Um, was it his fault that they didn't win a bunch when he was the offensive coordinator? No. Um, you know, it, there was other facets that uh, you know played a hand in in the Cowboys not really you know making any playoff appearances, not winning any Super Bowls. Um, I mean, like, listen, like that that's just kind of what it was. Um, it wasn't fully his fault, but the offense was damn good. You know what I'm saying? Like it really was, man. That was back. That was back when you had, you know, Tony Romo, um, Jason Witten when he wasn't super old. Um, you know, you had T.O. there. Um, you know, you had, uh, uh, I believe it was Barry and Barber was there for a little bit running back wise. Um, you know, <laughs> the, the they they had they had some pieces and that offense man that offense ran really damn good man I can remember uh, watching watching that offense and and being just like wow man this damn Cowboys offense is really good and I hate it <laughs> I hate it I, I hated how good they were so I mean it's not like Jason Garrett is a, is a bad coordinator man not, like he he's not um and and you hey you never know man maybe this is uh, Maybe this is a good thing for Jason Garrett. Maybe maybe Jason Garrett taking a step back, not being a head coach and solely focusing on the offense. Hey, maybe it could be a good thing for us. I, I don't know. I, I'm just not super high on Jason Garrett. I'm not like a huge fan of Jason Garrett. I understand that Jason Garrett has ties to the Giants. He played for us when he was a uh, you know active player, quarterback. Um, so I mean, hey, I, I can't I can't be super excited about J Jason Garrett. Maybe he can make Daniel Jones better. Right, maybe between him and uh, the Sklapinski, Jer Jerry Sklapinski, is that how you say his last name? I don't know how you say his last name, but maybe between those two, right? Maybe they make uh, Daniel Jones better. You know, maybe they fix some of his mechanics in terms of, you know, holding on to the ball too long. Maybe, maybe they, maybe they fix his footwork a little bit. Maybe they fix his uh, his ball security a little bit. I, I mean, I don't know. Um, but like, I I'm not gonna sit here and say that like I'm I'm super super happy. Uh, about Jason Garrett, uh, but it is what it is, man. He's our offensive coordinator. He's going to be on the sidelines. They're, they're going to get uh, a whole lot of uh, shots of him on the sidelines clapping because that's what he does. He's Coach Clapper. Uh, oh man, 
whatever, you know, whatever. Um, hey, but you know what? There was a move uh, that coincided with Jason Garrett, uh, and that was getting Mark Colombo as our offensive line coach. Yo, I'm not going to lie. I love Mark Colombo coming in and being our offensive line coach. Mark Colombo was a really good lineman when he played, all right, and then he transitioned and was a really good coach, all right? You got to remember, right, um, the, the Dallas Cowboys offensive line has been good forever. They've been good forever, all right? And, and when that offensive line kind of turned a corner, right, and became like really, really good, Mark Colombo was there. All right, Mark Colombo was there. He was helping that line. Now, th- th- now, does this does this mean that you know we're not gonna have issues at offensive line? Oh hell no, we gonna have issues at offensive line, right? Because we're missing pieces. All right, we're missing we're missing some some really really big pieces. All right, uh, our right tackle is non-existent. Our left tackle might as well be non-existent. When I say non-existent, like our right tackle, we don't have one. Right, we don't have a starter. Uh, and in our left tackle, he might as well not even show up next season because he sucked for the last couple of years. I, I, honestly, like, I, I think maybe he was hurt. You know, you you couple that with, you know, the stuff he was going through with his son. And maybe that explains why Soder was was relatively ineffective, uh, you know, as as, as the, the blindside blocker, right? Um, maybe he has a better season. Maybe we push his ass over to the right side. We find a better left tackle. I don't know. But but ta- our tackle play is terrible. We got to figure out what we're going to do at center. Jalapio, two years in a row, has been hurt. He's been okay, but he hasn't been great. Nothing to write home about. You know, we got Pulley also. He's nothing to write home about. I guess he's okay. Um, I, I, listen, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what we're going to do. Uh, you know, with 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 these with these linemen, right? But we got a coach who can come in and and he can make things happen. All right, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, another interesting hire that I want to talk about: <laughs> Freddie Kitchens. Yo, this was Joe Judge doing Freddie Kitchens a favor, man. Like straight up, this was this was Joe Judge taking care of of his boy, man. Um, Freddie Kitchens is gonna come over here and he's gonna be a tight ends coach. Man, whatever. I mean, I I don't know, man. P, Joe Judge talked about how discipline, you know, how, how much discipline Freddie Kitchens requires of his players and, and, you know, technique and all this other stuff. But I mean, like, man, I don't know, man. Freddie Kitchens over over in, uh, in Cleveland, he didn't look like a good coach. Uh, maybe he was in over his head. He was actually in over his head. Um, you know, because he, he kind of hopped up two spots in a very, very quick span of time, became a head coach and had no idea what he was doing. Um, but, uh, Freddie Kitchens as a tight ends coach. I mean, I, I guess cool. Um, you know, he's got experience doing it. He he definitely has experience doing it. And, uh, and, and we're going to see, all right, like that's, that's just, that's just what it is. Um, yo. Let me talk about, uh, I'm going to talk about one more specific guy that I look for big things for. Um, Coach Spencer, or, or as he's called, uh, Coach Chaos. Yo, I didn't know about Coach Chaos, man. I didn't know anything about him. And then there was talk about us picking him up and hiring him to come and be our defensive line coach. And uh, man, I tell you what, this dude... This dude gets me pumped, man. This dude gets me amped. Like when I listen to him talk and when I watch him interact with, with, with uh, you know, his players and, I, and I, I see him, you know, out there and this dude's amped up. He's full of energy. He's jumping around, dancing around, you know, screaming and yelling at his players. And, yo, that's a guy, man, as a defensive lineman, like, you know, when, when I was, when I was a, an active player, Yo, if my defensive line coach was turned up to a thousand all the time, I was turned up to a thousand all the time. So I love Coach Chaos. I cannot wait to see this dude, you know, on the sidelines. I hope the cameras focus in on him and he's just losing his damn mind because I love it. I love it. Yo, listen, when you're when you're a D lineman, right? When you're a D lineman, you a dog. 
You nasty, you dirty, you grimy, you gutter. You go out there and you punch somebody in the mouth. That's your only job is, you see that big fat motherfucker in front of you? Knock his ass out. That's it. And I love it. I love it. It was my favorite thing to do ever. It's still my favorite thing, man, is to be up in them trenches banging heads with another fat guy. I love it. I was never really a fat guy, right? But I, I was a fat guy at heart, I guess, because I love banging heads with, with the fat guys. But like, listen, man, this this guy, I like him. I like him a lot. Um, overall, right, um, I feel like uh, this coaching staff is, is, is decent, man. This coaching staff is decent. Um, you got a lot of guys on this, on this staff who have either been a head coach in the NFL, they've been a head coach at the college level, right? There's a lot of experience right? There's a lot of knowledge. He said he wanted teachers. He said he wanted guys that can go out there and teach. Yo, this man's got some teachers, it looks like, all right? And 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 the fact that it took a long-ass time for this staff to be put together. And when I say a long-ass time, I mean it wasn't like super long, you know, maybe about a, like a month, a little more than a month. Um, but man, it took time to put this staff together. And, uh, and I like that, man. I like that. It, it was, it didn't feel rushed. It, it didn't feel like a, just a mishmash of guys. A fair amount of these guys make total sense. Some of these guys make, they make sense for the most part, right? There, like, there really isn't anybody here, I guess, aside from maybe Jason Garrett, but, but then again, I, I, I can understand because they apparently our front office loves Jason Garrett and he loves our front office. I cool. Um, but like there, there really isn't anyone here that that like absolutely 100 percent doesn't make sense. Most of these hires make sense from a scheme schematic standpoint or just from a general knowledge of each other familiarity like it, it just it just seems to make sense now. This stuff looks good on paper, but we got to see what these guys do, all right, when the rubber meets the road, okay? We got uh, we got the combine coming up, right? And then we, and we got the free agency period happening. We got the draft, right? And then we've got, uh, you know, OTAs. Um, the Giants get to have a little bit of a, a little bit more time than some other teams because we got a new coach, Um you know, so between now and when OTA starts, like this is the time that these guys need to be banging their heads together, trying to figure out what the plan is. Like, that's what it is, man. And and I'm pretty sure they've been doing that, right? It wouldn't make any sense if they haven't from the time that they've all decided that they were going to work together and it was made official. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is all they've been doing is getting together and saying, hey, what are we doing? What do we think? How do we feel? What do you think of these players? Who do we want to keep? Who do we want to release? Who do we want to try to get in free agency? Who are we thinking about drafting? I mean, like, I'm pretty sure that they've been doing it. And this is the time right now that's going to make all the difference. Because in my opinion, in my opinion, coaching over talent all day long, coaching over talent so this is the time for these guys to get their shit together and get ready to go out there and get these players ready to go bang some heads so we're gonna see we're gonna see overall uh I'm, I'm relatively happy with the with the coaching staff but i'm not getting my hopes up i'm not buying into nothing right now right the only thing that i'm buying into is 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 Coach Judge. I'm buying into Coach Judge a little bit because the things that he said so far, he's kind of going out there and done it, at least from a standpoint of putting his staff together. I don't. I, I feel like this dude didn't tell me a bunch of bullshit when he stood in front of a microphone and did his initial press conference. As it stands, it looks like this dude's doing exactly what he said he was going to do, and hopefully he continues to do exactly what he said he was going to do. So we're going to see what happens. All right, guys. But I mean, that's that's pretty much my take on this on this coaching staff. I didn't want to go player by player because I'd be here for an hour talking about these guys, and I just I just didn't want to do that. All right. I just want to give you guys kind of an overarching opinion of this entire coaching staff. And I tell you what, as the season begins and as we go through the season, all right, we, we're gonna see. Here's what I will say though, and just I'm gonna close on this. Um, we got to give this staff time. All right. Uh, we cannot we cannot expect this staff to turn this thing around on a dime. All right. It may be a rough season coming up. 
All right, we may we may still be in a situation where we lose more games than we win. Okay, we can't expect to go to the Super Bowl ne- next season. All right, don't expect that because it ain't coming. We can't expect to make the playoffs next year. Okay, don't expect that because it ain't coming. The only thing that we should be looking for is the same thing I said we should be looking for last season, and that's progress. Okay, if we see progress, if players are playing better, if we're seeing good play calls, if we're seeing good decision making, then we know that we've got a good foundation to build on. Okay, but it ain't going to happen next season. So so if you can hear my voice and you're a big time Giants fan, yo, lower your expectations this season. Okay, don't be super high. Okay, try not to get super low. Let's just see what, what happens with this coaching staff. Let's wait and see what we you know what moves we make in this offseason and then just enjoy the ride, guys. Cause it ain't always gonna be pretty, but we 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 gotta build. All right. So to give some time before you guys jump on Twitter and call everybody a fucking bum. All right. Hey guys, uh, I appreciate y'all. Take some time coming to listen to, to my voice. All right, listen to me talk about my favorite football team. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell everybody about PTA Sports, and I'll get up with you guys later. Deuces.